So I really just have a bunch of pictures. Um, that's okay, and we're gonna um, maybe make up a little time. But these are some of the things that uh, we do in Oregon that I think are unique um, for bit tag arrays and bit tag monitoring. Um, we'll start out with um, what has already been mentioned, which are the FRP. Put on one off. Um, they are, um, they've been pretty slick and we're um, starting to use them almost exclusively. So, um, what they are basically is just a um, fiberglass reinforced plastic uh, jacketed with, um, and the water barrier is either PEX or WORSO. And so you do have an internal water barrier, but they're not very buoyant, which is kind of nice. Um, they're also, um, laser pointer. They um, <coughs> use I beams um, to um, secure, uh, I guess, the sides together and, and make them much more rigid. Um, and then uh, you can see the comparison there to the regular schedule 80, which is right down here, and they're two inch, uh, which gives them a lot uh, lower profile to. The water uh, and the effects the energy has um, on these antennas. Uh, they perform um, just about as well as the Schedule 80. Um, there's a little bit of a drop uh, in read range, but for where we're putting most of these, it, it doesn't matter because we're still um, most of the year uh, protecting over the water surface. Um, so another look at um, uh, insulation, where we're, most of our insulations are, um, you know, earth-driven anchors with uh, MR88, um, so that we use a hydraulic founder and don't drive through the ductile. Um, and then we strap it down with um, stainless steel strap, and they, they just, they're working really well for us right now. Um, one thing, um, I wanted to get into some of our electronics that we get on um, our field site. This is a pretty typical installation, uh, which is, you know, master controller. Um, sometimes we have a node that's close enough that we can monitor an antenna uh, close to the box. And then um, battery backup, battery switcher, and our modem. And something that might not be as <coughs> typical for an installation is uh, a bunch of uh, IS 1001 strung together and synchronized, so you don't even need a, a a master controller, which comes in pretty handy if you don't have plenty for it, or if um, or if you just want to, to put a, a system out quickly. The thing that we really use for these is the the B and B electronics modems, which I'll get into a little bit later. But so you can. Um, you can assign each one of the IS-1001 the port number and just dial into it uh, individually, pull off the data, and then go to the next one and dial into it and pull off the data. It's, um, they work really well for us. Um, it is nice if, if you're limited on funding. Derek, that's one modem that can talk to both of those. That's one modem that, so, yeah. <laughs> Go to uh, the smart. But the um, IS one thousand one, they um, an Ethernet out, or you can have a, a serial out or USB out. Um, and, and the modems themselves, you can have multiple Ethernet ports. Got a USB up, um, direct to serial port. And it's also got these um, expansion ports, which are RS-232. And so you can assign as really as many ports as you need to one of these modems. Um, you can expand this again by putting a switcher in. Probably 30 um, IS-1001s if you wanted to, and just dial into each one of them separately, which is it's really back again. Okay. Ferrag is our friend. This stuff is amazing. Um, 
This is a ferrite pile. Um, it uh, shields against um, any um, electromagnetic interference that's caused by a ferrous metal. Um, and it shields and it seems to reflect it as well and also boost the power. At least that's what I've seen. Um, we use this a lot. Um, dam installations, and believe it or not, there are still dams on some of these tributaries. Um, and it's also a really good, good place to detect fish. So, um, to an example, these are ferrite shielded uh, fiberglass antennas that has another, um, you know, tech interior uh, where we're um, running our lit wire. And they're shielded from that. Um, the rebar that's inside that concrete. Um, just a few more shots. We've got some at Foster Ladder, and then um, you can even be surrounded by um, this is all stainless steel. And as long as you have that ferrite shielding, there's two antennas inside this room, and then you get really good detection. Um, and it doesn't suck all the energy out of the field uh, as long as you use that ferrite shielding. And just one more example, which is um, this is at the state in B Stream, which is a great site. Um, we get all this, um, all this water gets strained down into this tiny little hot end box, where we've got three antennas, and we get fantastic detection efficiency going through here, and then it gets shoved it off to the North End River. Uh, but they're all, you know, very shielded in the antennas again. Um, and some other things we've done. Uh, this is a, a viewing window. One happens to be at Lieberg. We put in a few of these. Um, the antenna is actually framing the viewing window and um, shielded on this side with ferrite and it's pushing that field into the water um, on the other side of the viewing window. And we get, um, we interrogate that whole volume of water between. The, um, the window and the, I guess the crowder that goes um, in the ladder, which allows us to do things like um, look at the pit tag as it's coming through um, as a steel head that has been pit tagged, and you can see it in real time as it uh, gets detected, and so you can get great marker capture estimates just from looking at the video because you've also got unmarked fish going through there. And I already got into this. This is what we're really using exclusively wherever we have cell coverage. We don't have cell coverage everywhere. But um, you get to know your Verizon and AT&T works really well. They, um, they give you a, a, a SIM card and each of these modems can have up to two SIM cards so you can have redundancy if you need it. Um, but they're super flexible. They're they're um, between 450 and 650, depending on how many options you get on them. Um, but they're either plastic or they're also ruggedized uh, for industrial applications, which is really nice. Um, and they run off of, gosh, I think, between um, 10 volt and 36 volts. So they're super flexible. And you can put a cell booster in there if you need to in line. And then how we get most of the data off um, these sites is to dial into those modems. But we use an open source software called Terraterm and LogMe Terraterm. Um, we run this on a remote server where um, we have a script that runs. Um, LogMe Terraterm is awesome because you get uh, a scheduler with the script. It, it runs as a system um, icon in the background, and so it's always running as one of the servers on. Um, and the script runs and whenever you want it to. And so it's on a set schedule. Um, this script goes through. Um, what we typically do with our sites is we download all the tags, make sure we've got the data that we really want, um, and we really use our um, our test tags as our major diagnostic for all of our sites. I mean, that's big diagnostic. It tells us if the, the site's running, tells us when it's running, um, and it, that's a big deal for us. Um, 
and these scripts run, pull off all the tags, and then they go through and then pull off all the noise characteristics uh, from each of the either iPhone has a one of muxes or um, or the master controllers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it goes through and erases the buffer once we know that we have the data. Um, and then it goes through and time sinks uh, at least once a week for each of our sites um, with the um, national NIST standard um, that we use on the computer. Um, and that's kind of how we do things in Oregon right now. Um, this uh, data then is just a typical serial buffer download. It saves it as a file as a buffer download. Um, and we use uh, another software package to generate a TIFF file and submit it to tag it if we need to, if it's rich. Um, that's it. Any questions? <laughs>